This video will discuss graphical linkage synthesis. So what do you do if you want to move a four bar linkage through certain positions? Say you want the coupler, which is this red link, to touch two certain positions or three certain positions. How do you know how to design the linkage? How big do the links need to be? Where do the ground points need to be? We're going to learn how to do that graphically and then discuss a little bit on how to calculate it. What do you do if you want a four bar linkage to move through certain positions? Let's say you want the coupler to be at two certain positions or three certain positions. How do you figure out how long all the links need to be and where the ground points need to be so that you can design a mechanism that goes through those particular poses? We'll start out with an example. So let's say that you want a four bar linkage to move through two positions. So we'll have here and here. So if you remember the regular four bar linkage kind of looks like this. So there's ground, there's input, coupler, output. Now in this case, the ground is flat, but that's not always going to be the case. We could have one of the grounds be higher or lower, um, or this, and that would tilt the mechanism. But if we want this coupler link, to move through certain positions. Say we want it to go like How would we choose where to put the ground points and how to design the linkage? Because the one that we just drew doesn't match those points. So, procedure. Step one is to find the points of interest. So here we have the green position and the blue position. And we'll call the left endpoints P. Say this is P1, P2, and we'll call the right endpoints Q, Q1, Q2. So the Qs share a ground point and the Ps share a ground point. So then the next step is to connect the endpoints. So we'll do this. Um, connect the Q points and connect the P points. And then we draw a perpendicular bisector between each of those lines. So perpendicular bisector starts at the middle of a line and goes at a right angle. So we have the one for the Q points. And we have the one for the P points. Now the ground points could go anywhere on these two lines. So we could put the ground point here and we could put one here. If we look at how they connect, then this would be one position and this would be the other position. So here is R4, here is R2, from this being R1, R2, R3, R4. And you can see that the size of R2 doesn't change between P1 and P2, and the size of R4 doesn't change between Q1 and Q2. So that is a key point. Now, we could have made the ground points be somewhere different on the line. So they can be anywhere along this perpendicular bisector. So let's say, what if we drew it down here? And 
and connect those. So that's one position. And that's the other position. And you can see that the size of R2 and R4 doesn't change from, the, from P1 to P2 or from Q1 to Q2. So that is graphically how you would figure out for two position rigid body guidance.